Dan Ives raves about Tesla after the investor day. For investors, it's crystal clear just how far ahead Tesla is ahead of the rest of the auto industry when it comes to producing and scaling EVs, with last night being another display of the pure breadth and scale of Tesla globally. This was a showcase event for Musk and the Tesla community. On TV, Dan shared more of his thoughts as well as until when Elon Musk is going to be the CEO of Tesla. And it was a pretty long presentation, about four hours, some criticism just in the fact that we got this grand Tesla vision, but it lacked details. You don't seem to be concerned about that. Why? I think that's always the narrative coming out of these events. I'd say the same for Apple. Uh, I think what they really did was they laid out the foundation to drive costs down 30, 40, 50%. And that's going to ultimately enable them to have a lower price vehicle. Dan actually gets it. You know, which I think is really the important thing. I ultimately viewed it as a flex the muscles moment. Like, for example, making fun of their own old way of manufacturing vehicles, which Toyota says is a work of art. But it just comes down to these events knee-jerk sell-offs, we, we'd be buyers on it. That's how we've been telling our investors. How essential, Dan, is that under $30,000 Tesla model for the investor story moving forward? It's the hearts and lungs to get to mass market. I fully agree with Dan here. Also, Wall Street, can you believe it? Wall Street is estimating that in 2030, Tesla will deliver about 6.6 .6 million cars only. That is truly embarrassing. It is so preposterous not to take into consideration that Tesla will produce cheaper vehicles. They only model for S and X, 3 and Y, the Roadster, which Tesla is not talking anything about that. Is that even coming? I think it will eventually, but when? That's the question. Cybertruck and then the Semi. They are now modeling a cheaper Tesla. What do you think is going to happen? Once Wall Street realized, oh, Tesla has a $25,000 vehicle. Oh, we didn't have it on our spreadsheets. Ah, the stock just doubled. Mm, how did we miss it again? Tesla just stocked for four hours during the investor day that they are going to reduce the costs by about 50% for the next generation vehicle. It is clear the next vehicle is coming, and yet it is nowhere to be seen in Wall Street's estimates here. I mean, if there is no box to fill in the new vehicle, uh, just have a higher total estimate, and then you can still reduce your average selling price here at the bottom. No problem. To believe that Tesla will only deliver 6.6 .6 million vehicles in 2030 is to believe that Tesla is not going to innovate anymore and that everything, or for the most part, almost everything that Tesla just shared with us at the investor day is a lie. In other words, when, when you have 60, 70,000 hour cars, okay, you could sell two, three million, but you're never going to get to annual four, five, 10 million when you're selling at those price points. That's why sub 30K is so important, especially right now as part of this green tidal wave uh, in terms of electric vehicles. Tesla, it's their world everyone else is paying rent. So this is the opportunity now to put that iron fence around their install base. And that's essentially what they're doing. They're laying the groundwork. But of course, coming out of the event, investors, Wall Street, they want more meat on the bone. What, then what do you make of the reaction that we're seeing in the stock today? When the stock dropped, after the Tesla Investor Day. I know you were saying you weren't too concerned about anything or maybe lack of detail that we got out of the investor event yesterday, but do you think that's just simply a result of the fact that Tesla has is up so much since the start of the year? Yeah, so I think this is just a sell on the news, you know, in, in terms of maybe some anticipation going into it. But if you read the tea leaves, I mean, Musk is essentially laying out that they're going to be able to lower costs 40, 50%. Look at this neighborhood, look at Rivian. I mean, they, that, that's been a dog-eat-the-homework situation every quarter.
Dad has the absolute best one-liners. Meanwhile, at Lucid, no one ate the homework. Gary says listening to Peter Rawlinson, the CEO of Lucid, on the Lucid earnings call is like listening to the tour guide on an ocean liner about to hit an iceberg. However, I believe there is actually another explanation. Peter's dog simply said, bad grammar, run-on sentences, terrible spelling, I can't eat this. Then you look at Ford and others. I mean, it just shows Tesla's in a very, very strong position. I think that's sort of our takeaway. We did see some actual video of the Cybertruck, although again, vague promises from uh, Mr. Musk in terms of when we can actually expect it. How much uh, were you moved at all by, by seeing the truck? And do you think, how much of this is uh, part of your price target? Well, I mean, that, we don't really have too much factored in to our numbers. I mean, if you look at Cybertruck going 2024, I think it's going to be revolutionary. I mean, yeah, I, it's our estimate you have over a million pre-orders. Even if you cut that by 30, 40%, this is going to be massive. Dan Ives has a Tesla stock price target of $225. The moment the Cybertruck starts rolling on the streets, that price target is going to roll up. Because Dan said about a month ago that his price targets for tech are relatively conservative. So that's clearly one reason why he's not taking the Cybertruck into consideration yet. He's being cautious by maybe expecting a delay. And if it doesn't happen, if there is no huge delay, that price target for the next 12 months is going to go up. I mean, I think a year from now, you're driving around Manhattan outside of your studios and you see Cybertrucks. And I think this just ultimately sends that path where you're going to have Tesla expanding more and more of their model line now that they have the scale and the scope globally. At what price point does Dan Ives buy that hideous looking vehicle? I didn't like it at first, but now I love it. I'm on that pre-order list you are. myself. So if you see so if you see a Cybertruck in New Jersey about a year from now, it could be me. But look, I'm but I'm just a believer. Now again, this is a it's a People hate it, others love it, Mad Max. I just view this as sort of a revolutionary design that I think is going to you know, ultimately be attracted by many Tesla loyalists. I don't think it's just Tesla loyalists that will want this vehicle. It's simply a better pickup truck. I think many people will actually want it. And one million pre-orders, I think that's a pretty clear indication of that. Succession, because lots of questions, or I think a lot of people wanted to hear a little bit more about succession from Elon Musk. He had a number of his executives up on stage with him. How are you viewing all this talk about succession and what Tesla might potentially look like 5, 10, 15, 20 years from now? Look, I think Musk is CEO of Tesla at least through 2030. So, I mean, succession, you had Tom Zhu, you had others. That was sort of a show of force you know, to show it's not just Musk. But ultimately, look, Musk is the hearts and lungs of Tesla. It's part of how we are where we are today in terms of the what I view as along with Apple, the most transformational company in the market. But I think this was really showing that there's not a revolving door. You have a bench and you're starting to see that now play out. But I don't, in terms of as a CEO, I believe Musk is going to be CEO of Tesla uh, between at least till 2030. These court tr transcripts show to me that Elon is very aware of long-term Tesla stock price fluctuations and he does not like the possibility of the stock plunging long-term. As long as he has not sold most of his Tesla stock, I don't think Elon would just step down and just abandon the company. I don't think that's a real possibility unless something really crazy happens. Given that circumstances remain somewhat normal, I don't think Elon is going to step down until he actually sells most of his stock first. And Elon is going to be granted tens of billions of dollars of Tesla stock from the latest CEO performance award, and he will not be able to sell that stock for at least five more years. But first, he has to actually exercise these stock options. So it's likely going to be more than five years. The moment Elon exercises these stock options, you want to probably pay attention and reevaluate 
has anything changed? Is Elon still staying? Why did he exercise these stock options? You want to probably consider looking deeper just for a little moment, just to make sure nothing really seriously has changed. Elon does not appear too concerned about a JD Power uh, releasing its annual customer satisfaction rating, which Rivian dethroned Tesla in the EV category. What are your thoughts on Rivian's future and their cash position? It's a frustrating one because just like you said, like I think like what Argentina built, like the product, the category, it's, it's game changing. The problem is you have to be able to produce the vehicles and that's been their Achilles heel. And it's sort of been one thing after another. I believe they're starting to fix it, but they need to scale over the next nine, 12 months. That's sort of the key. And it's not a zero sum game. You're going to have a lot of benefits as part of this green tidal wave, including, you know, many in the 313 area could. I believe GM is going to see a renaissance of growth. You know what happened before the renaissance, which started in the 14th century? Dark ages that lasted 900 years. It is going to be a pain for Rivian. For Rivian to recover to where it was before, it needs to go up 655%. Whoa. <laughs> and this is the Tesla stock buying opportunity explained by Elon Musk. My name is Matt Posius. Like and subscribe if you haven't yet. And I will see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching.